Got another walkthrough video on the NMR topic. So this is number 12 now. It's actually a couple of questions from two different papers here. So if you want to have a go at those, pause the video and then play them when you're ready for the answers. Okay, so the first one, we've got to establish the number of different carbon environments in each of these compounds. And obviously that will equate to the number of peaks in the carbon-13 NMR spectrum. So compound C, all of the carbons are in different environments. So we'd see one, two, three, four, five peaks. Likewise, in compound D, these are all in different environments. So it's five again. Moving on to compound D, these two methyl carbons are actually equivalent to each other. So we've got one, two, three, four. Okay, so moving on to the one about serine. So I've got a displayed formula there for serine. It's going to make it a lot easier to explain. So I would, I would encourage you to do that in an exam. It's much easier to see environments if you've got a displayed formula to work with. So we're told it's shaken with a few drops of D2O before it's been analysed by proton NMR spectroscopy. And obviously the D2O is going to remove this proton signal here, this one here, and these here. And that's because um, the deuterium atom in the D2O um, exchanges with these protons. It's got an even number of um, nucleons. It doesn't possess the property of spin. So it doesn't give a signal in proton NMR. So you can see I've just highlighted them. We can ignore them now because they're not going to contribute to this table. So we've got two proton environments. We've got this one here and these here. Obviously they're equivalent. That's why we've got two rows in this box. So if we start with this one here, so this is where the displayed formula is really helpful. What have we got? We've got H to C to C double bond O. We've also got H to C to N, but if you look at your data sheet, they're actually in the same part of the um, table. So they would both give a signal sort of between the two to three ppm. The relative peak area, so we're comparing the relative amounts of protons in these environments, obviously with one of those and two of those. And the splitting pattern, so we're looking at what this is adjacent to. So this, the signal for this will be split by these two. So using the n plus one rule, two plus one is three. So we're gonna see a triplet. Okay, so moving on to these hydrogens now. So these are in the H to C to single bond O environment. So they're going to appear around about three to, I'm just looking at the data sheet here as I speak, three to 4.2 ppm. We've already said the relative peak area would be two. So obviously there's two of those compared to that one. And the splitting pattern, so look at what they're adjacent to. They're adjacent to that single hydrogen. So one plus one, N plus one rule. One plus one is two. So we're going to see a doublet.